So now that we're experts at drawing um, Lewis structures, we can look at an issue of sometimes you can draw a Lewis structure two different ways, uh, but you get different sets of something called a formal charge. And so one set, one molecule is going to be better. It's going to be more favorable than another. And so you have to be able to figure out why that is. So what I mean by that is look at, let's look at carbon dioxide. Let's see if we can draw the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, CO2, we're going to have a carbon and an oxygen and an oxygen. And let's count up how many electrons we have here. Well, carbon has four and oxygen has 6 times 2 gives us 12, so we have a total of 16 electrons, and I already used up 2, 4, so now I have 12 left over, and I get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and I'm out of electrons, but carbon's not happy. So what do you do when you run out of electrons? You have to start forming multiple bonds, but there's a few different ways that you can form these multiple bonds, right? You can take um, one pair of these electrons and put them here and one pair of electrons over there so you can get something that looks like C double bond O with a double bond O right that's one way to do it and I still I have two four six eight that carbon's happy two four six eight that oxygen's happy two four six eight that oxygen's happy and I have a total of two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen electrons so that's one way to do it but I could also just as easily have taken two sets of electrons from this side or two from the other side. And if I did that, I would have gotten something that looks like this, where this oxygen has two, four, six, eight, this carbon has two, four, six, eight, and this oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So they both satisfy the octet rule. You may be looking at that going, of course that first one is right. It's symmetric, it looks pretty, but we need to be able to quantify why that is right. So what we can do is calculate something called the formal charge, and you do that for each of the atoms. So we're gonna find a formal charge for that oxygen, that carbon, and that oxygen. And formal charge is the number of valence electrons. So oxygen has six valence electrons, carbon has four, oxygen has six minus the number of lone pair electrons. So those are your dots and half the number of bonding electrons. That's basically the number of lines. So if you just take the formal charge, uh, formal charge is the valence, number of valence electrons minus the number of lines around each around that atom, minus the number of dots around that atom, you will end up with the correct formal charge. So this oxygen here has six valence electrons because every oxygen has six valence electrons. That's independent of the Lewis structure itself. That's just you know the number of valence electrons. This guy has two lines and four dots. So that gives him a formal charge of zero. Carbon, four, four lines, no dots. And this, and this oxygen has two lines and four dots, zero. So they have formal charges of zero, which is really good. That's actually what you want. Um, the best formal charge is the one that puts the fewest charges or, or the lowest charges. Um, and then if you have a negative charge, you want to get that on the most electronegative atom. So this guy's all zero. That's what you're shooting for. You can't get any better than that. So that's a great structure. If we look at this one, the same formal charge calculations, we get this oxygen has six minus three minus two. It's a positive one. Okay. Carbon four, valence electrons four minus four lines minus zero dots at zero. And then this oxygen has six valence electrons minus one line and six dots gives us a negative one. Okay, um, so that's not really uh, close to zero. Now, if you if you have sometimes you have to have a charge. If you have an ion, somebody has to have that charge. All these all the formal charges have to add up to whatever the charge is on the on the molecule. So this adds up to zero. Plus one minus one plus zero also adds up to zero. So the best structure is the one that has the lowest set of numbers. Or um, if you do have a negative number, you put that negative number on the most electronegative atom. So let's try another one. And if you want to stop for a minute, pause the video, and try this one out on your own, you're certainly welcome to do that. NCO. So if I give you three atoms in a row like that, keep them in that order when you're making the Lewis structure. If you did NOC, you're going to get you're going to get a totally different molecule. So this one is N to C. To o. And it tells you it has three possible Lewis structures. So you're going to draw three structures with this guy. NCO, NCO, and then NCO. So let's see. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, carbon has four, and oxygen has six. 
so that gives us 15, but it has a negative charge, so that gives us one more, that gives us 16 electrons. That's what we're dealing with. So you have 16 electrons, you already used up, oops, you already used up 2, 4, right? Minus 2, 4 for the bonds gives us 12. So now I do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and what's wrong? Carbon's not happy. So what can you do? Carbon needs two more bonds. You can take them both from the nitrogen, right? You can do that. You could make one on each side. Or you can put them all over here. So let me just fix this structure over here so it looks a little better. So let's just make sure everybody's happy with that. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So that's 16 total. And I have this nitrogen has 2, 4, 6, 8. Carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8. Oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8. Same thing's true, all these guys look good. Now, how do you figure out which one's the best structure? You have to calculate the formal charges. So nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, and then you're gonna look at which set gives you the best, um, best arrangement. So nitrogen has five minus three minus two gives me zero. Carbon has four valence electrons, four lines, no dots. And oxygen has six valence electrons, one line, and six dots negative one. So this one looks like zero, zero, negative one, if I just wrote that on top. Okay, so somebody has to have a negative charge because this is an ion, right, and it was NCO minus. So when I add up zero plus zero plus negative one, I get a negative one charge. So somebody has to have a negative one charge, and that's fine. This nitrogen, so tell me about this nitrogen. He's got five valence electrons, two lines, four dots. So what's that, negative one? Carbon is four minus four minus zero. And this oxygen is six minus two minus four is zero. So nitrogen has the negative one there. All right, so then you have to think, okay, that's the same set of numbers, zero, zero, negative one. The rule is that you wanna put the most, uh, the negative charge on the most electronegative atoms. So if you go over, back over to your periodic table, fluorine is the most electronegative. So in this one, oxygen's closer. So you want the negative charge on the oxygen not the nitrogen. So this is a more favorable structure than the second one so far. Let's check the last one and see what happens. We have five. So we have five minus one minus six. What's that? Negative two. Four minus four minus zero is zero. And six minus three minus two is plus one. Well, this one's like the worst one. So I still get a negative one charge overall, but this is a minus two and a plus one on a really electronegative atom. This is definitely not the right one. So this has to be the best structure because it puts that negative charge on the most electronegative atom. So negative charge on most electronegative atom. And oxygen, in this case, is the most electronegative atom. So that would be the most dominant structure.